I've been puzzling over a few things today. Um, one being what to call my YouTube channel. I've reached the number of subscribers where I can give it a custom URL. So that means that I'm able to give it a name rather than or whatever it is that YouTube actually give you. Uh, so I asked Facebook and I've had a whole load of really interesting um, answers so far. The one that I'm kind of favoring is a variant of some one that somebody gave me this morning and that is riding life legless what do you think I'm trying to keep it short riding as in me not riding but you know play on the name which is what i've always done with my surname riding or do i need the through riding through life legless riding life riding life legless something like that let me know what you think then I um, went to the pool as usual and whilst I was searching for the YouTube channel I came across uh, searching for ideas for names and things you know um, YouTube channel about being an amputee but wanted to play on the on the word amputee and it's you know, I don't know and I went to the pool and was thinking about it there too did some more Google searching and found somebody's bio on a YouTube channel saying that it was in, they didn't want to be inspirational um they there was a whole big long spiel about not wanting to actually be that inspirational person and what they actually said was actually um actually resonated with me because they were saying things like well you say that i'm inspirational by doing this and that but would you tell someone with two legs and two arms they're inspirational because they got uh, dressed got dressed this morning and went out the door you know it's it's about putting things in context and it's interesting because i've come across that an awful lot like the lady in the pool uh, the other day, I've been watching you, you know, you're very inspirational, you put all us able-bodied people to shame. Why does it have to be a comparison? Uh, why, you know, um, why is it that I'm, it's more amazing because I've lost a leg? Because to me, it's just the same. I'm just still doing the same. Everybody keeps saying, oh, I'm amazing, I'm inspirational, the way I'm tackling, blah, blah, blah. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm just doing the same. I have just got, one less foot than I had before, but I'm still doing the same. And th those people that allow it to actually get to them and alter their life pattern, I can't even get into the same ballpark as that. I really can't. Um, so this person saying that he didn't want to be inspirational, well, I kind of see what he means. I, I think it's really cool that, it, um, that it's motivating people to do things they wouldn't do. Um, I mean, that part I think is really good. I got an email from a customer saying that they they had um, they they knew someone who was facing an amputation. Could I put them in? Could they put my send my name to them? And I said yes, sure. I'm more than happy to talk about it and how I've tackled it and all that sort of thing. But I'm not doing it to be inspirational, and I don't want people to keep saying, "Wow, you're amazing." But but I know that it is and it helps and yeah it's all it's really difficult to describe. So the name of the YouTube channel I'm still figuring that out as well. And then the next thing I'm going to do and I'm going to do it right after I start my tea, which is right after this, and that is start the book. Now I looked up my uh, bucket list. I've got my bucket list on bucketlist.org. Can't get into the damn thing because I can't even remember my password. Um, but bucketlist.org is a website. I created a bucket list many, many, many years ago. And on it is to publish a book. And that was a long time ago. And I've been talking about this and a lot of people have been mentioning it. And the hospital manager has mentioned it more than once every time she sees me. So I figured the most difficult thing about doing uh, do, tackling something in a list, in a plan that is really hard, is actually getting started in the first place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a plan. I'm not uh, because I have a sequential sort of thought about things. And if you write a book, you need to start with the first word and blah, blah, blah. But it's actually not like that. Well, I'm assuming it's not like that. So I'm going to start with a plan, look at how you plan a book um, and go through the key points in my life and sort of work out which ones are worth mentioning and make that sort of plan. Uh, 
and then work it from there. I haven't decided at this point what type of book it's going to be, whether it's going to just be autobiographical, whether it's going to be something a bit more complicated than that. Not sure at this point. Um, I do want it to inspire people and motivate people to, you know, be the best versions of themselves and that sort of thing. So I'm going to have to give it some thought, but I'm going to start at the beginning with making a list of life events and which ones are actually the most poignant, probably, in the story. And it's an, it's um, it's work in progress. So how do you end it? You know, because it could go on forever. So where do we end it? Do we end it here? Do we end it into the future? Hmm, I don't know. I'd, li I'd like to hear your thoughts on that too. So I've been doing a lot of thinking today. Which is probably just as well, really, because it's blowing a bloody gale at the moment uh, outside. So it's just best to stay inside in Southland, I'd say. Next week, I cannot stop thinking about leg day. I honestly cannot. And the day that I can walk into the pool without having to get some assistance from anyone uh, is dominating my mind at the moment. And I need to try and focus on the other stuff that I need to do this week in instead then I was sitting watching the news and New Zealand has just got its first community case of COVID in a really long time. And it's somebody who came out of managed isolation, having flown into the country and tested positive twice. And now there's a mass panic. Um, at the moment, the case is in Northland, which is absolutely the opposite end of the country. But it's... Uh, Call to arms, really, New Zealand, because we're living in this little bubble over here and life is reasonably normal and nothing is that much affected. But it's out there. It's like, you know, the zombie apocalypse. It's out there at the borders, chomping at chomping at the borders, ready to get in and destroy the country. And the people of New Zealand really need to be aware of that. What you don't think of is all of the quiet little back ground impact that it has and the one that is the biggest on me at the moment is prosthetic limbs parts now it's they're under a lot of stress at the limb center to try and get parts i've had a limb sleeve on order for two and a half months now and we're still waiting there's no sign of it coming anytime soon and that is because the one I had was the neoprene one that was rolling down at the top. There are people that have been waiting for feet to put on the end of their prosthetic limb. I'm supposed to have two, one in, in the making or in parts or whatever, and one that I'm wearing. I can't because we can't get feet. So every time I need a new leg, I need to give them back this one. Have anybody that is sailing around Europe oblivious to the fact that COVID is around and breaking all the country's rules, trying to get this thing under control. Have all those people thought about those sorts of things? Uh, even though it's not in New Zealand, it's still impacting me directly because we can't get parts in. And New Zealand is a small island nation in the middle of nowhere that relies on imports for a lot of things. So we are starting to run out of a lot of stuff. All of the whiteware in shops, they've got no back stock at all. Computers, there's very little spare stock at all. We import all of our cars and um, so that, that won't be happening either. Like I said, the limb centre parts Think about the medical system. I mean, I don't know how they decide what's important and what's not. I mean, a leg is not life-threatening. So I could very well end up legless again multiple times because we can't get parts in because of the global impact of COVID-19. Somebody mentioned to me the other day, it's actually been 100 years since the Spanish flu, which was the, the, the last global thing, which was before... Um, during, after, after World War One. So yeah, I'm just feeling a little bit sort of with it all, all the stuff swimming around in my head. I'm getting frustrated by the fact that we can't get the bits and I'm, I'm um, restricted to the wheelchair and crutches and my wrists have just about had enough. 
Um, planning the book. I need to stop talking, go and make my lunch, dinner and get that started. I need to start a plan. I'm going to do it before the end of today. I'm going to tell you tomorrow what it is I planned so that I have got it there written down. And also think of the name for the YouTube channel. Uh, an official name. I need to look up and see if I'm able to change it because I have a feeling you can't once you've named it on the URL. So if you've got some ideas around what you want me to call it or, you, or things like that, um, then let me know because I want it to be good. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling, go and make my tea and start that book. Talk to Sue.